Hello, I'm Chef Leanne. I live and work in the fabulous Florida Keys. I've lived in the Keys and worked the industry for over 40 years. I've had the pleasure of working with my mother and my two daughters by my side in my restaurant, the Coffee House, for 21 of those years. In 2017, I lost both my home and my business in Hurricane Irma. I had to strap on my boots and get to work. In 2018, I opened my new business, Clouds in My Coffee Catering, mostly private chef events. Um, in 2021, I opened up The Table, which is for private personal events. I had the great opportunity to travel to France, Spain, Italy, and Portugal. This is where I learned my passion for food and wine. Today I'm going to be doing an authentic Italian carpaccio. I'm going to be doing it with a beef carpaccio, but you can do it with salmon, raw tuna, or portobello mushroom if you're a vegan or a vegetarian. I'm doing the traditional carpaccio, but I'm doing it with a Caribbean flair. And the way I'm doing that is by I'm garnishing it with the stone crab cloth. We're going to use the front part of the cloth for this application as the garnish. And then I'm also making my own cilantro, Calabrian chili, shallot oil to do the drizzle, and then we'll garnish it with the capers. Let's go ahead and get started. This is a uh, tenderloin tip of which I put it in the freezer for a short period of time just to get it nice and cold, not frozen, so that uh, it's easier for slicing. So we're gonna go ahead and slice it nice and thin. I left it wrapped in the saran wrap just because it's easier to slice it, but you don't have to. So I'm just gonna do a couple of slices to put on the plate, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this saran wrap so that I can pound it out for its display. Another piece of saran wrap. Lay it right on the top, like that. And if you have a uh, flat mallet, that's great. If you have a, a um, rolling pin, you could use that. If you have a bottle of wine, it doesn't matter. Just make sure it's a flat surface and you just want to gently pound it. You don't want to destroy the tenderloin. You just want to give it a nice display. That's enough. And now we're going to go ahead and plate it. Take the top piece off. Put your plate on top of it and then you can flip it and hopefully it'll work. Voila. So there's your tenderloin. Easy enough. And then the, the stone crab, I'm just using the claw of the crab. Stone crab are uh, harvested in Florida only, mostly in the Florida Keys and the Everglades. Uh, the season for harvesting stone crab is October through May only. Um, you can only take the claw during harvesting and then you throw the body back into the ocean um, so that it regenerates. It takes about 18 months for it to regenerate. I have a cracker here and I'm just going to show you how to crack a claw very quickly. These you can pick up um, at one of the fish markets in the Florida Keys. Um, I happen to use Brutus Seafood who uh, shipped me these beautiful stone crab. Uh, she ships all over the United States and she also has these crackers available. So you put this under here and you just give it a nice pound. You don't want to uh, hit it too hard otherwise it crushes it. Like that. And then you just nice and gently take the claw out. like so. So I have them already cleaned here. So we're going to put the two claws on the plate. 
as a garnish. And then next we're going to make the cilantro aioli sauce. So I have fresh cilantro here and I'm gonna be uh, doing it in the blender. All right, so we're gonna be making the cilantro chili pepper key lime oil to garnish on the top of the tenderloin. Um, I'm just using fresh cilantro and I'm just gonna rip it because we're doing this very uh, informally. Little bit of shallots. My favorite chili is the Calabrian chili, uh, which you can buy in any specialty store. Um, but you can use really any kind of a pepper um, that you like, um, cayenne pepper, uh, the dry chili peppers. I just happen to like the, the Calabrian. Um, it's sweet and it's also hot. Put a little bit of chili pepper in there, um, a little bit of mustard, and then um, key lime, uh, which is also from the Florida. Florida Keys, um, they're yellow, they're not green. Uh, when these ripen, they will turn um, a beautiful yellow color and the inside will also be a beautiful yellow color. You would have to squeeze a lot of these limes in order to get four ounces of key lime juice. So the go-to and my favorite is Nellie and Joe's key lime juice. You can squeeze the key limes if you want, but I would recommend that you use the uh, the Nellie's. It will make life so much easier, I promise. I'm doing like maybe a tablespoon of the key lime juice and then a little bit of extra uh, virgin olive oil. I really like the light oil, but I don't have any today, so I'm going to use the extra virgin. Uh, maybe about three tablespoons and then salt and pepper. That would be fine. The reason I'm putting it in the squeeze bottle is only for a professional reason um, because I like the way it looks when I put it on the plate. I put almost all of my sauces in a squeeze bottle, but you don't have to do it this way. You could just use a spoon and drizzle it on. So we're going to be finishing our carpaccio. The beef has been pounded. I've got the stone crab claws cracked. I've made my cilantro, chili, uh, key lime aioli. Um, so now we're just gonna put it all together. So I'm gonna take the aioli and just give it a good drizzle. I'm gonna use the key limes to make the plate beautiful. A little bit of shallots because everybody loves shallots and capers on a al carpaccio. You can't have one without it. And then of course, the capers on top. A little bit of rock salt. And then some arugula. And there you have it, a authentic Italian carpaccio with beef tenderloin and Florida Keys stone crab, garnished with a key lime. So now we're gonna be doing the second course, uh, which is um, also an authentic Italian potato croquette. Uh, very similar to an Arancini rice ball, um, but instead of using rice, we're going to use potato. Uh, in my family, it was whatever was left over, um, rice or potatoes, but you do it the exact same way. Um, we're going to be doing the croquette with the potato. I already mashed the potatoes. This is a just basic mashed potato recipe, um, and I'm going to add some chopped up shallots and some chopped parsley, just to give it a little bit more flavor, some salt. And some pepper. Instead of filling it with a traditional ragu, uh, which would go in a Italian, um, either arancini or croquette. Um, now in order to roll these, um, I'm going to stick my hands in flour and I'm gonna keep them floured all the time. Um, otherwise, it's going to stick. So uh, if you're doing a uh, event for appetizers, you can do small ones. Um, if you're doing a, a dinner, which I'm doing an entree, so I'm making them nice size. And I'm gonna serve two of them on the platter. 
but you can make these any size you want. That's easy enough. So now we're going to be making the filling for the croquette. I'm using the knuckle of the stone crab. I'm using cream cheese, softened cream cheese, um, only because it helps hold the crab together. Uh, but you could use any kind of cheese. You could use a goat cheese. You could use uh, mozzarella. Um, I use the cream cheese because it helps hold the stone crab together. And again, of course, I love my Calabrian chilies and I have to bring the Italian into it. So I'm adding a little bit of the Calabrian chili. You want to make sure that you get a lot of that uh, crab meat in there. Again, I'm going to flour my hands. Take your potato croquette and you're going to put a little hole in the center of it with your finger. Almost like a well, like this. And you're going to put your filling in. You don't want to overfill it because then when you're frying your potato, it'll uh, pop open on you. Okay, and then you just take the potato and you just kind of work it around until you close the hole and make sure it's nice and sealed like that. Give it its round ball. There we go. Same thing. This is time consuming, but I guarantee you, your, uh, whoever your guests are that you're cooking this for is going to just absolutely love it. I like doing wine pairing, and I just recently did a wine dinner uh, with the Minor Wine uh, Winery, and uh, we uh, paired the Chardonnay with this particular dish um, because of the cream cheese and the stone crab in the middle just brought out the, uh, the flavor um, of their Chardonnay wine, and everybody was just over the top wowed by it. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the dredging part of it. I have plain flat all-purpose flour, I have eggs, and then I have seasoned breadcrumbs. I like the seasoned breadcrumbs um, just because it brings it more flavor. I'm gonna flour my hands again. Very important, otherwise everything starts to stick to you. Roll it in there. Shake off the excess flour. Then you're gonna go into the egg roll it again, and then into the breadcrumbs. Make sure it's nice and round. I'll put it on the plate, and then go to the next one. These are fun to make too. You know, if you're doing it for a dinner party and you only have a few guests, you know, you can do this and refrigerate it um, ahead of time. It can stay in the refrigerator. Actually, it's better that you refrigerate it because it'll keep it all nice and uh, in the form of the, the round ball. Uh, they do their potato croquettes, but they're more in a cylinder shape. Uh, in my household, my grandmother's kitchen, it was always the round potato croquette. All right, so I'm gonna let these set in the refrigerator for just a couple of minutes so that before we start to fry them, and then uh, meanwhile I'm going to make the sauce that's going to be on the plate. My grandmother would have served her potato croquette on a bed of marinara sauce. I'm going to be doing it on a traditional mustard sauce because in the Keys they serve stone crab with a mustard sauce. But I'm going to put my spin on it <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be adding the Calabrian chilies to the mustard sauce. So now we're gonna make the uh, mustard sauce uh, for the bed for our croquette to rest in. I'm gonna put a spin on a traditional mustard sauce. So I'm using mayonnaise, and everybody has their own version of a mustard sauce. This is my version. I'm using Dijon, and then Worcestershire, which is, is in a traditional and then they would use cayenne pepper. But I love my Calabrian pepper, so I'm going to be using again the Calabrian pepper. And I want a little bit of heat to it, so I'm adding a lot. And that's just going to go on the bottom of the plate for our croquettes to rest on. All right, now. My croquettes have been in the refrigerator um, for about 10 to 15 minutes 
And um, I've got uh, canola oil. You could use vegetable oil if you like, but I like using canola oil. And I brought it to temperature of 325 degrees, which is actually the perfect uh, temperature for frying these. I grew up in an Italian family, uh, five generation of women uh, cooks. I am the first uh, in my family to have a chef's degree. Uh, my grandparents uh, were from Calabria uh, and Naples. They were goat herders and cheese makers. When they moved to the United States, they opened up several restaurants in the New Jersey area. They brought in uh, chefs from uh, Genoa. Uh, Genoa is the Riviera of Italy. It's the seafood capital um, in Italy. And uh, my mother grew up in this environment and she learned all of the recipes and then she taught them to me. So I'm super excited about uh, keeping the family traditional recipes uh, because it's what I know. And then adding the Caribbean flair because I work in the most fabulous place in the United States, the, fa the Florida Keys. And I'm surrounded by ocean. Uh, so for me, uh, that is my farm to table. Uh, I like sourcing uh, local seafood. I love using the key limes and using the mango and oranges and pineapple. A lot of the Cuban and uh, Bahamian uh, flavors and spices, I bring all of that into my traditional Italian recipes that I was, was taught as a child. All right, so um, in my uh, household, my grandmother uh, would do a tomato salad. We grew up calling it jabul. I have no idea why she called it jabul because I tried looking that up in the, in the uh, Googling it and there's no such word but she called her tomato salad jabul. So um, to bring the Caribbean flair to it, I'm doing the Cuban uh, salad, which is tomato and red onion. And then I used, again, uh, the cilantro oil that I made for the first dish. And I'm telling you, uh, when I put this in front of the clients, they're like, what do you have in this salad? And it's really just fresh cilantro um, with the chili which I'm telling you, it's the best thing. And the oil and a little bit of pep, uh, salt. So I'm gonna put, I have my sauce down. I'm just gonna plate the potatoes like this. And then um, if you have any fresh herbs, you could use basil, you could use parsley. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and deep fry it for a garnish. When I was going to culinary school, uh, one of my instructors told me, um, never put anything on the plate that you can't eat. And I remember uh, people always put parsley um, as a garnish and it's always taken off of the plate. And I thought, oh, well, why do they do that? Um, so I fry all of my garnishes because it just gives it a, a texture feel and it's really good. So if you have the opportunity, fry your herbs. Has a nice crunch to it. Almost like a chip. I did these earlier and they're just beautiful. And then these will just make a nice garnish for the top of your plate. A potato croquette filled with stone crab knuckle, Calabrian chili on top of a mustard sauce, uh, my version of the mustard sauce, um, and then a Cuban style salad and fried basil leaves. You can't go to the Florida Keys and not have a key lime pie. Um, I do my key lime pie a little bit uh, different. Um, I call it a key lime tart. I use a puff pastry um, that you bake in the oven at 275 until it raises and then the center you just take the top out and then just make sure that you have all of the raw materials taken out of it. Um, the key lime filling is a traditional key lime filling. Um, you could read the recipe in the back of your Nellie's bottle. So I'm going to be using sweetened condensed milk. I have two egg yolks. 
And I'm only going to use a half a can for this demonstration, but you can follow the recipe in the back of the bottle. And then I have four ounces of the key lime juice. I'm only going to use half of this again because we're doing half a portion uh, just for the demonstration. You never want to whisk the filling for your key lime pies because you don't want to have air in the, uh, the filling. Um, if it, it then turns into a custard and it's a different kind of a texture than what you want for a traditional key lime pie filling. So I've got it all incorporated and I'm just going to go ahead and fill my tarts. And then I'm gonna bake them in the oven for just a couple of minutes in order to bake off the raw yolk. So we're making a whipped cream to go on top of my key lime tart. It's a basic whipped cream. Anybody can make it, it's easy, um, and if you have any left over, it's great for coffee in the morning. So I'm just taking heavy cream. You could use a food processor or a blender, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna go ahead and start it off. The thing with uh, making a whipped cream, uh, you don't want to overturn it because then it turns into butter. So you do have to keep a good eye on it. Um, the best thing that I like to tell my students um, is that uh, you, you listen to it. It has like almost like a whoop, whoop, whoop sound to it. So go ahead, turn it on. Now that it's mixed a little bit, now I'm gonna add the sugar and the vanilla for flavoring. And the amount of sugar that you add in is up to you. If you want it to be a sweet uh, whipped cream or you don't. Um, I want it to be sweet. So I'm adding two tablespoons to my heavy cream. And then to add flavoring, I'm putting in some vanilla. And I'm only using a half a teaspoon. And then this is where you really have to keep a close eye on it because like I said, if it overturns, it turns into butter. Voila, it's done. So now we're gonna finish off our key lime tart. Um, the whipped cream is ready, it's nice and thick. You can put it in a piping bag if you wanna make it all nice and fancy. I don't think it's necessary, but it's your party, you do it the way you want it. And then we're gonna go ahead and powder it. All I did is take some powdered sugar and I put it in this fine mesh. Okay, okay. And there you go. This has always been the hit of the party. A key lime tart with homemade whipped cream. If you wanna see more of me, uh, next week, I'm going to be doing a whole grouper pasta puntanesta. It's a site, and you want to stay tuned for that. Um, you can also check me out on my website, Instagram, Facebook, Clouds in my coffee catering. Or if you happen to be in Marathon in the fabulous Florida Keys, let me do the cooking for you. I'd like to give a shout out to Elise at Brutus. Florida Keys Seafood Company. If you would like to have those stone crabs shipped to you, they can do it. <laughs>